Okay, welcome back. This is live in Las Vegas. This is the end of day one. This is our wrap-up segment of theCUBE at the Splunk Conference, Dot Conference 2013. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, my co-host, and Jeff Kelly making an appearance in this segment who's been scouring for stories, talking to all the folks, talking to the CEO, talking to all the, the people on the team, customers, scouring the web. Guys, welcome to the wrap-up. Thank you, John. Um, John. Guys, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with uh, what Splunk's done here um, and with post-IPO. You kind of see what people are made of when they have to do transitional things, Dave. You know, we, you and I have seen companies pivot, turn on a dime. You guys certainly have helped companies you know, get into the, into the, into the thermal growth. And, um, but here, a company's succeeding. Um, they hit a rocket ship growth, they go public. A lot of challenges, could be distraction, but certainly uh, my impression is no distraction here. Splunk certainly is hitting cruising altitude and only getting better and stronger. Certainly the customer acquisition numbers is strong and their partner ecosystem's great. Their keynote and fan base, their customers are loyal. All in all, Dave, I got to say, you know, Splunk's looking really good. Yeah, John, I mean, I think you see a lot of different models. There's just two broad models, I guess, in the, in the IT business. One is the safe bet. It's, it's IBM, it's, it's HP, it's, it's EMC, it's Oracle, it's Cisco. I mean, you're going to do business with those companies because you know they're going to deliver a product and they're going to stand behind it and they're going to service you. And then you got the 10X value proposition companies. That's companies like Tableau, ServiceNow, Workday, Splunk. These are the companies that are really transforming. They're irreverent, as Steve Cohen said. They're disruptive. You know, they sort of, they're disruptive. So they got a little mojo going. And, um, but at the same time, customers are willing to take a chance because the value proposition is so compelling and so transformative to their business, and they can't get that from their traditional IT suppliers, despite what the traditional IT suppliers are telling them. So I love that kind of mojo at, a, at, a, at an event like this. Jeff Kelly, I want to go to you for a second. Uh, let's talk about um, what you're finding on the show. Obviously, you were on the, on the uh, with a, uh, a crowd chat today, we're you know, preparing up for Hadoop World and Big Data New York City. A uh, quick programming note, um, we, the queue will be in New York City for Strata Conference, Hadoop World covering that in, con in concert to the Big Data New York City event going on as well that week. Mm -hmm. um, but you're out, you did a chat this morning talking about Big Data with Hadoop ecosystem. A lot of Hadoop here, we had Cloudera, Amarawadala on, obviously. Um, they have a uh, relationship also with Hortonworks. Um, what did you find out there? What stories did you dig in? What observations did you find? Well, very much like uh, the last show we were at, uh, Tableau's customer conference, it's a really excited uh, customer base here. These, these customers uh, you know, are, are clapping and cheering during the keynote. It's something you don't necessarily giddy. They're, see. They're more than excited, they're giddy, right? I mean, right? They're, 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 they're giddy. Clapping, they're hooting, they're hollering. Right, and, and there's really a sense of community around the, around the customer base. They love to trade stories, they love to trade best practices. The hackathon last night I was at, uh, you know, just rooms filled off the off the, the corridors here at the uh, the Cosmopolitan. Really? They were there at 11 o'clock at night. They were in there. You know, they had uh, some 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 TV going. They had, so I saw a rerun of Alf playing on the big screen for some reason. I guess that's a popular with the group here. But anyway, so these guys are up there all night. You know, they're coding, they're drinking beers, they're having a good time. Uh, they really enjoy this. It's not something you see at a at, at one of the uh, larger events. Uh, some of the mega vendors we see. Um, you know, the other thing, uh, you know, Mike. Coming into this, Splunk, I think, was really early on uh, recognizing the, the value that providing applications that allow you to really manipulate and understand data. Really, they saw the value of that very early. Obviously, that's the, they based their whole premise of their uh, organization on that. Uh, they have you know, kind of ridden this wave uh, of big data, all things big data, and they're one of the few companies out there that are actually selling and, and providing applications that allow people to make sense of um, in this case, machine-generated data, but they're expanding to other data types. Um, the key for them, I think, going forward, is to continue innovating. You know, they've kind of got that lead. Uh, I think because they were the one of the first out of the gate to recognize the value in this, they got to keep innovating. And I think you saw with the announcements today, clearly they are. Uh, the cloud uh, option that they uh, unveiled today was very popular, um, and it's going to help them, especially against some of the more nimble startups. It's funny. Splunk is now kind of a, kind of a big established company in a sense in, in this large in this big data world. There are companies like um, Logly and Sumo Logic who are coming at Splunk, doing similar things but doing it from a cloud perspective. Well, Splunk's now got an answer for that. Well, I want I want to ask you guys about that because you know John Jeremy Burton, we, you know made the, we were there when cloud met big data, and so you, people have been putting those two together. But you take yeah. a company like Splunk and a company like Tableau, not big cloud plays. What about that cloud meets big data? Right. Is that is that a misconception on the industry's part? Or no, no, not at all. Is not it, is, is, or is it a fundamental requirement that cloud meets big data? 
I think it's a fundamental requirement. As you know, we were you know, close to EMC when they put that together, and we had the first cloud mobile social editorial. You guys had the first real research around those three pillars. Um, and big data just became a, came out of social and cloud, uh, and hence the cloud era, you know, pun intended with cloud era, the company. Um, but you know, Dave, we saw this from day one. This is a fundamental economic wealth creating inflection point, meaning new companies, new brands going to emerge that are going to change the game. And this is where all the chips are on the table and you're seeing the incumbent vendors like EMC change their game and go cloud meets big data and go in that. And EMC, I give Jeremy Burton a lot of credit. He saw the work we were doing, he saw the marketplace, he came fresh into EMC and said cloud and big data, those are the two pillars. He bet the ranch on that and the bet's coming home. Jeremy Burton's making more money than any, he's not a CMO anymore, he's an executive vice president doing great just on the stock options. He made a good bet, he's playing out. He's also a great executive with some product chops. Absolutely table stakes, in my opinion, um, that the application market is going to be enabled by that. So Jeff Kelly, so I got to ask you, there are forces that you mentioned. You've got open source, uh, you've got some new players that are, are, have seen the opportunity that Splunk has created, they're, they're going to have to Splunk. So, so what's your prediction here? I mean, you got, you got a public company now, they got more resources, they're clearly a leader in the, in the business, but you got other companies coming after them, not only startups, but you know, we were at, um, we were at HP, uh, the, the Vertica user group, they were talking about, you know, their Splunk killer, uh, you hear it all the time, oh, we can do that, we can do that. Mm -hmm. What does that all mean for Splunk? Well, the good news for Splunk is they're, they're, they're ahead of everybody in this game, because they've been doing this for longer, uh, you know, they, they, they have a, a more generally accepted uh, among the customers, uh, you know, a better application for VMware, for instance. So they're actually ahead of a lot of these other vendors. Like VMware itself, trying to claim, right? It's right, oh yeah, VMware work. says, well now we've got a tool for monitoring that's just as good as Splunk. Well, you know, if you talk to some of the people using the uh, Splunk app for VMware, they'll disagree with that. Uh, so bottom line is, you know, this is a little bit simplified, but people really like the Splunk user interface and the application, it's very easy to use, and that's something that you can't uh, necessarily replicate. So you know it'll take it'll take some time for some of these players to catch up. But you know back to the point John was making, this whole idea of cloud and big data, and you're asking, you know, is that really is that really the the, the two mega trends here? And I think absolutely. When we start talking about uh, industrial internet, Internet of Things, whatever term you want to use, we're we're years away from that really being a, a reality. I think in terms of an interconnected world, but. Yeah. Clearly, the two key enabling technologies are going to be big data, making sense of all those connected devices, and cloud, being able to connect them in a way that, that makes sense, yeah. um, where you can't do that in an on-premise situation if you've got isolated data centers. Now the other thing, this company started in 2005, it's yet another Silicon Valley success story, John. I mean, it's just, Silicon Valley's just running the table. What, what's your take on the Valley action going on here? I think Silicon Valley is going to continue to um, do well and, and um, and rule the road here on, on IPOs and, and success. Silicon Valley is the ecosystem that drives a lot of wealth. It's the Wall Street of startups. However, there are, there are a lot of successes outside of Silicon Valley. This is just another string of, of successes. Um, but Dave, this is an absolute poster child, in my opinion, of a venture that could have gone the wrong way. I mean, Splunk was not a shining star when it got funded. It took two visionary venture capitalists, uh, Nick and David Hornick. Uh, Nick from, uh, he's now with Ignition, and uh, David Hornick from August Capital, made the bet. They bet on technical founders. They bet on the right product guys. It was a small tool. It was a, it, and, and it was, a, at the time, it was, wasn't the trendy thing. This is pretty big data. This is log files. They saw a problem, they saw a good team. Now this thing could have gone off the rails, right? If you look at today's market, and this is what I worry about all the startup environment is that, all the different funding dynamics, all this crowdsourcing, this, that. You got to have good investors. This is a great example of great investors back in their guys, back in their team, because this thing could have been off the rails in the fourth year. Okay, product strategy, debate, boardroom dynamics, people not paying attention, uh, asleep at the switch as we say. And this is, this is an example of a company done right, they hit the growth curve, big data swooped in, they had a great product, happy customers, and incrementally moved the ball down the field and finally you know, scored the big long ball with the touchdown with big data. And I think you know, it's classic, to use our football analogies, you know, first down, first down, first down, and then big data comes down, they throw the ball in the end zone, touchdown, home run, there it is. That's the IPO, that's a success story. I mean, there's a fine line between good and great here, isn't there though? I mean, like you say, I mean, who, even Stephen Cohen was saying, uh, 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 not, not Stephen Sorkin. Cohen, sorry, Stephen uh, Sorkin, Sorkin uh, was saying uh, that he didn't, he couldn't have predicted, you know, where they'd be today, the IPO, et cetera. So there is a fine line well, that could go to Well, this is the thing, great. this is my point. And, and if you look at Splunk, right, Dave, they could have 
no one was buying their stuff initially, right? And so, except for some tech geeks, no one was kind of get it, but the recession hit and people weren't spending in 2008. That was a big surge. And you saw the spending and Splunk became a great solution because for very little cash, you can come in and create business value. That was a really, really important moment in the company's history, David. And what's, what also happened is they believed in their own product. You heard from the people here, culture. They're everent, they're disruptive. They use their own product and they focus on the customer. Those two things, good timing, still is, you know, comes to people who are prepared. So I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not enough to just have a big market. It's not enough to just have a lot of capital behind you. You need other ingredients, obviously, to succeed. This is what I'm afraid the younger generation doesn't understand in the startup world, is you can't just magically put pixie dust and get the home run. You got to sometimes really be in a good position, as they say in basketball, be ready for the rebound off the rim. In this case, a log file tool with good technology moves into the big data world, and hello, they've got enterprise customers. Part of, I think part of it, look, you got to admit, part of it is luck and timing. You've got to have that on your side. But they've also got a really good product, and they're smart enough when, the, yeah. when those opportunities present themselves to take yeah. them. I think they are, again, timing is, is fantastic for them right now. We've been talking about the, uh, the, the year of the big data application, and we're really still waiting for that. They are in a really good position right now to really take advantage of all the interest in you know, SQL on Hadoop, interactive analytics on Hadoop. Well, guess what? They've got a product in Hunk, a uh, cute name, but a good product that allows you to get right in there as a business user and start analyzing searching data using a it's search interface. It's a good looking product, I got to tell you. It's a very good looking product. <laughs> and people are looking for this. People are like, well, how am I going to get all that value it's out a of a hunk of a product. How am I going to get all that value out of, out of Hadoop? Sense, Spunk's bug got sense, an answer. Hunk. They got the naming conventions yeah, down. some interesting names. But nevertheless, they've got, uh, they've got a play right now in an area that's got a lot of interest. And they've got, they've got the track record in the log data to actually show they've got, they know, how to, they know well, what they're doing. Well, remember Mike Olson, two cloud, uh, Hadoop worlds ago, announced the, the application tsunami. That kind of never came. We, We're still we, waiting. We said, we said the analytics was a killer app. In the meantime, as the market kind of catches up, we still haven't seen that application framework hit, but yet still, analytics is the killer app, right? Analytics is definitely the killer app, I think. Well, uh, it's analytics for the masses is the, is the killer app, and that's the holy grail that everybody's going after. And I'm not, I'm not declaring Splunk is there. I don't think Splunk is there. I don't think anybody's there yet. You talk to Tableau customers, you talk to Splunk customers, they're not there yet, but they're closer well, than the BI crowd ever was. They're certainly closer than the traditional BI players, and, they, and, and that's because they don't have that legacy architecture to deal with. Guys, uh, but there's also a cultural issue. It's not just the technology of the products, it's getting business users to understand how to look at data and, and look at it as, as an asset and something you can actually drive yeah, value. The timing's right for that. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to wrap up and ask you guys some follow-up questions uh, to close the segment out. Uh, in first impressions of day one, and what are you looking for for day two? Uh, Jeff, we'll start with you. Uh, and first impressions, you know, like I said, very excited uh, base of customers here. You know, 18, 1,800, excuse me, plus customers, 18,000. That'll be a few years, but uh, nevertheless, a good showing here. Uh, I think tomorrow, you know, on theCUBE, we're going to look for certainly some more customer stories. Um, you know, it's always interesting to hear from customers because they are on the front lines. They're using the product every day. So I, I expect to see a lot more of that. Um, and really tomorrow, I think, is going to be a lot about, a lot about uh, these customers networking with one well, another, and I'm hoping to get out there and talk to let's them. Let's add on the question to, uh, to, to you then, and then to Dave, same thing. What's the challenges for Splunk as well? I think the challenge for me, is, for, for, from my perspective, is to continue and, and make, the, make the cloud play real. Continue to invest in that, uh, in that product and that approach. Um, as, we, as I mentioned a minute ago, I think cloud and big data are critical to really leveraging the industrial internet, the internet of things, and if Splunk wants to be a, a key player there, they've got to re really fill out that portfolio of cloud-based capabilities. I know you said Dave go first. Yeah. So well, so for me, for me, John, um, we heard from the executives today, very strong story. Uh, we heard very solid product lineup. It's very clear in talking to customers that there's, there's passion here, there's real traction. Um, it's substantive. To me, the big thing is ecosystem. I feel as though the ecosystem here at Splunk is, is, is good, but I feel like it's not been as deliberate as it can be. I think Splunk has a ways to go there. I think that is one of the leverage points that this company really has to focus on because like today we talked about earlier, 45% of Splunk sales goes through the channel. I think it's got to be way, way, way higher than that. Now, they're making great progress, but I think that they, they've got to have a goal of getting to 70%, and that comes through the ecosystem. It's going to take some time, it's going to take some investment. That's really where, to me, the big upside is for this company. Uh, my impression is I'm, I'm very impressed with Splunk, I'm very impressed with the ecosystem, I'm impressed by the rabid fan base of their customers who are proud of the product, and again, it exemplifies my point about startups having a great product focus. Products will win, again, you know, the four pieces of marketing as I teach you in, in Marketing 101, one of those product, 
Um, but the challenge is, Dave, I would, I would agree with you. The ecosystem is a challenge. Good news is they have a great turnout here. Um, they're not, there's no lightweights out there, all heavyweights in terms of what they're doing with tech and their value proposition. So, you know, great start for the ecosystem. So I think that it's looking good off the tee, to use the golf analogy, um, landing in the fairway. So, so that's one. My big, my big thing on the challenges for Splunk and that I'm watching is the cloud. I think moving to the cloud is not as easy as it appears, although that's the value proposition. So to move the DNA of the company with the pressure to drive revenue, luckily the market's kind of moving to them right now, so it might be a, a rising tide floats all boats. Moving to the cloud is very, very difficult, and I think that's going to be a key challenge. We're going to keep watching that. Look at what SAP has challenged with the cloud. They've had multiple restarts and misfires. Now they're seeing them get their groove back with HANA. I think this could be a big challenge for Splunk. And we're going to, I'm going to watch their cloud, and that's going to be my focus for, what, for them tomorrow. Yep, I would agree with that. I would just say on the ecosystem point, um, I, I think they're in actually, I think they do have more work to do, Dave, but I think they're in a really good position because some of the, Hadoop players, for instance, need Splunk, I think, more than Splunk needs them right now. Okay, we're going to close down like the government's closing down right now, so, um, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, the Except boy. we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be, be back tomorrow because <laughs> we work for free here in theCUBE. <laughs> we are open source content. Um, programming note next week, Dave, we're going to talk about big data and Internet of Things. I'll be interviewing the CEO of GE. On stage yeah, Jeffrey Immelt. I'm, I'm really proud of you, John, for uh, <laughs> being selected. Out of the zillion people that they could choose, they chose you to, to host this panel. Yeah. So I think that's just fantastic. Yeah, I, it might be my last, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll bring some Cube Mojo to the GE event, Industrial Internet, next week in Chicago, Minds and Machines, uh, another player to watch. Guys, great day and great wrap up here. That's day one wrap in the books tomorrow here. We're going to go to the party tonight, find out what's going on here at, at, uh, inside. The Cube Inside uh, Splunk Conference, Dot Conference 2013. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly, Wikibon. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night and, and join us tomorrow.